Greetings and welcome. Welcome back to another wristwatch video and another wristwatch review. And in today's video, we are taking a look at Seiko's cocktail timeline of watches, more precisely, the Seiko Passage SSA 441J1, aka the Grasshopper. But before you do that, quick wristwatch check. What am I wearing today? Today I'm wearing my own Seiko, my Seiko 5 SNK809. So I already made a review of this watch, and if you're interested in that video, link is in the description down below. Now let's take a closer look at this lovely little Seiko watch and then come back here, talk about the pros and cons and overall if I recommend to buy this watch. Okay, so now let's take a closer look at the Seiko Presage Grasshopper. Now, I don't have the box the watch originally came in, so we're just gonna jump straight into the dimensions of the watch as we always do in these reviews. The diameter of the watch is 40 and a half millimeters. I measured the thickness at around 12 millimeters. The lug to lug distance is 47 and a half millimeters and the lug width is 20 millimeters. The case of the watch is made, of course, out of 316 L stainless steel, as is to be expected at the price point this watch used to go for. And the finishing is fully polished, so we only have polishing everywhere on this case. Now we also have the crown at the three o'clock position. It is a sign crown with the Seiko S and it is a pull push crown. So you pull the crown out to set the watch. When you're done setting the watch, you push it back into position. So having in mind it's a pull push crown, it's not a screw down crown. It usually indicates a lower level of water resistance. And in this case, in, for this watch, the officially declared water resistance is 15 meters. And what does this mean? Well, it means you should not go near water. If you're caught in the rain, okay, but don't wash your hands or anything else with this watch. You're gonna have a bad time. Now protecting the dial of this watch, the beautiful dial of this watch, is this raised and domed piece of Hardlex crystal. So Hardlex crystal is something basically Seiko invented, at least as far as I understand. And it is somewhere between mineral and sapphire crystal. So it's more scratch resistant than mineral crystal, but also more shatterproof than sapphire crystal. However, not as scratch proof as sapphire crystal. Now, while we're already here, let's take a close look at the beautiful, beautiful dial, which is exactly the whole point of this watch. So this is a wonderful, gorgeous, textured emerald green dial. It goes from more bright green at the middle to more dark green at the top and bottom of the dial. And it just plays so beautifully with natural sunlight. However, it's very difficult for me to show you on camera because there is absolutely no air coating on this crystal. As you can see, it's extremely reflective. So unfortunately, I can't show it here. I'll, I hope I can make some a decent B-roll of this watch so you can see the beautiful dial a bit better, but trust me, it is a beautiful dial. Also, we have applied our markers everywhere on the dial. They are finished in high polish, which is great. We have printed mint markers going all around the dial as well. Below the 12 o'clock position, we have Seiko, and above the six o'clock position, it says Versage Automatic, so not a lot of text on the dial, which is a plus. And also, of course, as you can clearly see, on the nine o'clock, we have the open heart complication. I think that's considered a complication. Essentially, you can see the balance wheel of the movement. And the hands are dolphin style hands with this beautiful golden second hand, which has very nice contrast with the rest of the dial. It's a very, very beautiful dial in my opinion. And also, as you can see, it has a balance wheel. So this already indicates that this is in fact a mechanical movement, but it is also an automatic movement. And the movement powering this watch is the Seiko 4R38 movement. Now, this movement beats at 21,600 beats per hour. It has 41 hours of power reserve and 24 joules. Also, it has the complication of hacking and hand winding. However, we'll show you those functions a bit later. So that's basically it regarding the actual watch. Now let's talk about the strap or the bracelet, sorry, and the clasp of the watch. So it is a five link bracelet with a mix of brush and polish finishing. So the first, third, and fifth link are brushed and the second and fourth link are in polished. The links are solid, however, unfortunately, the end links are not solid. They are, in fact, hollow end links. And the clasp of the watch is a butterfly clasp, which you open by clicking these two buttons here. However, as you can see, it's a pressed metal butterfly clasp. Not, not that good, to be honest. And you essentially just close the clasp by clicking these two back into position. And uh, let me just show you how to set the watch now. So essentially, you pull the crown out to the first position and then you can set your watch. And when you're done, you just click it back into position. But let's make something like 
this. And also, hand winding, you rotate the crown upwards and it starts to hand wind. Let me just show you, how, oh, or you can hear how that sounds. Yeah, so it's fairly a fairly quiet hand wind, which is a plus. And as you can see, when you pull the crown out, the second hand stops, so it's hacking. It has a hackable movement. And the last thing I want to show you is how the watch looks at my six and three quarter inch wrist. So you can kind of get a feel how it might look on your wrist. And as the French would say, voila, this is the Seiko Grasshopper on my wrist. It's a fairly large watch, so it wears a little big on me, but because of the short lug to lug distance, I think it can work on most wrists. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this little watch. So let's get back to the original perspective, talk about the pros and cons and overall what I think should you buy this watch. And we are back. So that was the Seiko Presage Grasshopper close up. So now we come to the part of the video where we talk about the pros and cons of a watch and overall if it's in fact worth a buy, at least in my opinion. So let's start with the pros as we always do in these reviews. The first pro being, of course, the brand, the very Seiko brand. Why? Well, because it has a lot of history, a lot of heritage behind it. And there has been a lot of innovation under the Seiko brand in the wristwatch world. In fact, Seiko made a lot of Swiss wristwatch companies go bankrupt. So having a Seiko on your wrist is a pro. Everybody in this hobby who knows at least something about watches respects Seiko. The next pro is the dial. In fact, the dial is the main pro of this watch. It's the main thing on this watch that attracts people. The beautiful emerald dial. It just looks amazing, especially in natural sunlight. Like you have to see this in person to fully appreciate how beautiful this emerald dial is. So the dial has to be the biggest pro of this watch. The next pro is the movement. The forearm movement inside this watch is easy to service. It's not expensive to service. It's easy to source parts and you know it's gonna last a couple of decades if taken care of properly. So that's why I would put this movement as a pro for this watch. And finally, the Hardlex crystal. Now maybe some people disagree because they prefer sapphire crystal. However, uh, Hardlex is more shatterproof than sapphire so it's superior in that regard. It's not as scratch resistant as sapphire true, but still it's scratch resistant enough. I think Hardlex crystal deserves to be listed as a pro for the swatch and those are all the pros I found and now let's talk about the cons the first one being a bit more personal to me it is the size because I just think that a dress watch should not be close to 41 millimeters in fact because uh, the bezel on this watch is fairly small it looks even bigger on your wrist now truth be told short luck to lug distance means that it's fairly wearable but still it looks pretty big on your wrist I just don't think just dress watches should look this big they should be smaller they should go under the cuff they should not be that much in your face so I would put the size as a con. The next con is the movement. Now even though I listed the 4R as a pro because it's easy to service etc, uh, I just don't think it's adequate for a watch in the Presage line because 4R watches are more for the Seiko 5, more for the entry level line of Seiko watches. Uh, next con is the bracelet. In all honesty, the bracelet and the clasp are horrible. They are hair pullers and it just doesn't give me a lot of confidence. And what I also don't understand is why the the bracelet is brushed when the case is entirely polished. It kind of doesn't fit in for me. I don't know why they made that design choice. So the bracelet and the clasp is definitely a con. And the final one is there is no AR coding. Again, a bit more personal because it makes my job more difficult to make B-roll footage of the watch. But even besides that, in certain angles under direct sunlight, it's very difficult to read what time it is on the watch. And yeah, those are all the cons I found. So uh, when it comes to the actual experience of wearing the watch, I would say it's fairly comfortable. It's not heavy on your wrist. It doesn't interfere with everyday activities. It is in fact a very comfortable watch to wear and a very attractive watch to wear because a lot of people like said really love the emerald green dial in fact one of my co-workers loves the watch so much that he started researching about it and then started watching wristwatch reviews on YouTube and hopefully maybe he will get into this hobby as well so I think it would be cool that this watch actually got somebody into the hobby and also my female co-workers uh, thought this watch looked pretty good so uh, not something I usually state in my wristwatch reviews but I think this watch might even get you a couple of compliments if you're interested in getting compliments for your watch at least that's my experience so now let's talk about if you should buy this watch brand new if you can even find it brand new because I don't think it's that easy to find this watch new in stores anymore but if you do if I recall the price usually went somewhere around $500 500 euros and in my opinion brand new for that price I just don't think it's worth a buy. Why? Well, I think other brands offer a lot more in the same price category. Just look at Citizen, for example. So Citizen offers either in the same price category or just a little bit more. They offer very, very much superior watches to this one I have right here. The two biggest cons, 
because uh, I, why I don't think I could recommend this buying it brand new is the movement and the bracelet. The movement, like I said, is an entry level for our movement, which is appropriate for entry level Seiko watches like the Seiko 5 line. Presage, you should get a better movement than the 4R movement, at least in my opinion. And again, the bracelet, I don't like the finishing. I mean, the finishing is okay. It's, it's executed okay, but it just doesn't fit with the watch case. Uh, the fact it has hollow end links, the fact it has a stamped metal butterfly clasp, it's just not worth it for $500. They could have at least had solid end links on this watch. So because of that, because of those factors, it's just not worth it. However, if you buy it secondhand, if you buy it used, it's a totally different story because if you can find this watch for like $250, $300 max, I think it's okay. I think it's attractive enough. I think it looks good enough. I think I can understand somebody buying this for like $250. Of course, if the watch is in good condition, if it's in bad condition, don't buy it, of course. So to conclude, should you buy this watch brand new? I would say no. Used, yes, for a good price. Uh, you will probably attract some attention with this watch and I do mean positive attention. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. If you like open heart movements, if you like uh, green dial watches, this is a good watch for you, but just buy it used, find it for a good price and you will be very happy with your purchase. And that's pretty much it for this video. So if you like the review, of course, as always, leave a thumbs up. If you dislike the review, leave a thumbs down and maybe give me some suggestions on how I can improve my content. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more wristwatch or fragrance related videos. And until next time, guys, have a great day and 